Welcome everybody to the first installment of the Visual Studio Remote Office Hours, where we will uh, explore the uh, new world where a lot of us have to work from home for the first time. And I'm sitting in my kitchen right now because I don't have uh, I don't have an office. And I had to like wire in here's an Ethernet cable that I had to go and buy because I actually didn't have one at home that was long enough. And um, so I'm sitting in the kitchen because that's where the router is. And so I have all these sort of uh, difficulties or challenges, if you will, working from home sort of for the first time for an extended period. Um, and I, you know, and we were talking about this on the Visual Studio team, and we kind of thought that probably a lot of you out there are in the same boat. And um, so let's see if we can uh, if we can help each other out a little bit and um, talk about some good tips and tricks. And uh, who's better? to help us with that than um, the one and only Mr. Scott Hanselman. Hello, Scott. Hey, hello, hello. Um, we'll get this figured out in the future where we can have a side by side. Right now we're learning how to use Teams live events. There's a Teams meeting you can join, but that has a limit to the number of people you can have in it. And this is called a Teams live event, which is kind of cool. So we've got our friend Rajan who is switching us back and forth. I'm here in my home office in Portland. Um, and um, we were going to talk, try to basically have a time each week where you could talk to the team. We'll have guests on and we'll figure all this technical stuff out and uh, make it so you can ask questions about how to be a more effective remote person. And it's also worth pointing out, as we mentioned a little bit before when we were getting our technical difficulties, is that remote work and quarantine work are a little bit different. So if you if you don't quite feel like you've got your feet underneath you and you're doing remote work right, it's probably a reasonable thing because the stress of being stuck at home is different than just becoming a remote worker. Yeah, right. That's a really good point. And um, yeah, so it's something we want to do every week. And so the first topic is sort of just tips and tricks to get off the ground working from home in a successful way so we can maintain some level of productivity. And then we'll talk about more uh, maybe some Visual Studio features about how we can handle like remote collaboration in a smarter way um, with uh, stuff like live share and all that, but that might be next week. Um, and actually there's uh, some new features coming in Visual Studio uh, soon, new experiences for, for working with Git and whatnot that might be interesting for, especially when we're working from home and, um, and doing code reviews and whatnot. So uh, that will be for uh, maybe uh, another time in the in the near future. Um, but right now, I want to talk about how to stay sane maybe or stay productive when you're home. I'm faced with two little kids. I have a two year old and a four year old and they don't understand that when I'm sitting with my headphones in here in front of my laptop, I'm at work. They don't understand that. And so they disturb me a lot and uh, I'm not very productive like i'm probably in the first couple of weeks i was i was probably at 50 percent capacity like i was really not productive and uh it's gone up a little bit um but i'm nowhere near what i used to be um so scott how can you help me what can i do what are some tips <clears throat> so my my children are a little bit older uh but i did i was working when they were babies um one of the things first is to recognize that you're not going to be 100% productive. So I, I push back gently on your original statement where you're comparing how it was before. The, the deal is that with remote work, we can't try to pretend that it's not remote work. We can't pretend that we're trying to be as productive in the exact same way. And by the exact same way, I mean time boxing our life from nine to five or eight to six or whatever our hours are. Babies are babies, families are families, they need that time. So you might find as a remote worker that to get your, we'll just say your eight hours or your nine, 10 hours, um, you're gonna need to do it in chunks, right? You know, when you have a new baby, you don't get eight hours of sleep, you get a couple of threes, right? If you're lucky and you try to combine them like Tetris pieces into an eight hour sleep moment, a sleep segment. As a remote worker, I tend to go and do like, you know, 8 to 11 or 9 to 11 and then hang out with the kids for an hour or so. Um, just before this, I was helping them put their scooters together and pumping up the tires. Um, after this, I might hang out with them for half an hour. So your daily life has to be structured, but it also has to be a recognition of the Tetris pieces that you're trying to fit 
to assemble a productive day. The second thing I would offer to you is, uh, and I can hear you moving around in there. What are you doing, man? <laughs> are they are the babies come in? No, I, I, I actually don't know where they are. <laughs> oh, you should probably find out where they are. That's important. Uh, another uh, thing is don't lose your kids because your they, could, they could just run away. You have no idea. Um, another fun thing that I've been working on is really simple. It's just the idea of maybe lights that can change color outside. You can just get some light effects or any kind of Wi-Fi lights or any lights and just have a light near uh, mommy or daddy's office that lets them know that you're either not available or you are available to say, hey, if the light's green, you can come and, and bother daddy and make it a game. Oh, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So, but what, how do you make it a game? You make what it a mean? game, you say, hey, if, 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 if it's green, see if you can sneak into daddy's office. And my, my younger son would do the Navy SEAL crawl and he'd try to sneak in here <laughs> only when I'm green to like attack me or whatever. Oh, but when it's so red, you know, you're red, you know, like red is important. So you have to be and you have to be you can't just set it red for six hours, right? You have to switch it on and off and let let them know that there is a time when they can come in here. The other yeah. thing that's really important is that a, as a leader, as a person on a team that people look up to you, we the folks that are listening, set the tone. You set the tone for what's OK um, to. To the credit of our vice president, Amanda, I have been in meetings and her daughter will come in and just sit on her lap in the middle of a meeting. If she were kind of pushing the baby away or being implying in any way that it was not OK, that sends a silent message to me that that's not OK. But by her normalizing it, that makes it OK for me and I don't feel bad. So the acknowledgement that Kids exist. We are humans. Why not be reasonable about that? Uh, get set from the top down. That example is set from the top down. Yeah, that's a really good point. I've, you know, I've had my kids in a lot of meetings, and they just come in, and I see other people's kids all the time, and or dogs, and you know, whatnot. Um, it's definitely sort of a new world in that way, and people seem to embrace it um, in, in at Microsoft. That's kind of cool, and mm -hmm. I think we've also been, we've actually been working from home a little bit longer than I think uh, is the average around here anyway. Yep. I think we were actually sent home maybe two weeks before the state of Washington where we are um, went into a lockdown. So uh, so I think we're on like week five or week six. Um, and one thing I have noticed actually is that I am more productive when it comes to to work like creative work that I can do on my own that is sort of an isolated task, like doing a Power BI dashboard or writing a Visual Studio extension or something like that, uh, than I am at the office because uh, I get maybe an hour, a full hour, maybe even two hours without any distraction at all. Uh, and then the only distraction at that point becomes like all the notifications, right? Emails, um, pop-ups from like Teams and Skype and you know Slack and whatnot. And so, uh, that has actually increased. And so I, what I've figured out is that I can, if I just kind of mute those apps, sometimes I just close them down uh, if I really need to focus. And that that seems to be helpful. Um, but it usually, it has to get bad before I close them down. And so I'm not so good at doing it as early as I probably should to be more effective. But um, how do you handle that? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, the the thing is, and you can see there's actually a question here from Tomas who's talking about the notification flood that you're referring to, right? Where everyone is interrupting you. We we are enabling people to interrupt us with these little these little devices. And the challenge here is I don't think that we are intentional and deliberate about what we choose to allow into our lives. You can delete Outlook from your phone. You can remove Slack from your phone. If you want to compartmentalize your life, if you're in the kitchen right now and that's your workspace, decide that that's your workspace. And when you leave it, then make sure that they can't get you when you've left that space. If you have a studio apartment and your corner is your office, how do you make sure that your work doesn't bother you outside your office? Well, if you've got your phone and you got your work email and you got your uh, all your notifications, Turn them off, airplane mode, remove the apps, delete Outlook. If you've got Outlook on your phone, Mads, you know you can put it into quiet hours. Teams has quiet hours. 
I've put in specific hours that I will accept that time and other times that I will not accept any notifications. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? And what, when I say deliberate, I'm saying if you accept the defaults, the defaults in your life, the defaults on your phone, then you've accepted the defaults. Then it wasn't your decision. Now, here's the thing, Mads, if it feeds your spirit and makes you happy and you don't mind sitting on the toilet at 2 a.m. doing work email, we have the technology to enable you to do that. But if you feel that that technology is an intrusion into your life and 2 a.m. on a Sunday is not the time for email, you accept that the defaults, reject the defaults and decide what works for you. If, if the phone should not be bugging you at seven, turn it off, figure out a way with the settings, with the notifications, with privacy, with do not disturb mode to prevent it from injecting into your life. And, and again, I wanna get back to that, accept that you are not gonna be eight hours of work productive during this time. If you get six good hours and you don't get fired and you survive this thing, then I think you're doing an awesome job. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And, you know, I actually do, I've never had uh, notifications enabled for any of my apps, uh, except for text messages, pretty much. So like on my phone. So for emails or I do have Teams now, but only because I don't have notifications. Mm -hmm. And so that's super uh, important. But, you know, that's, that's really important for me to not feel like I'm at work when it's the evening, let's say, or the weekend. But when I'm at work, when I'm at work, you know, in my kitchen here during the day and I'm, you know, trying to concentrate on something. And because everyone is remote now and everyone is like, there's no, you don't just go to someone's office, right? Because you do that now through Teams or Skype or something like that. And so I feel like the notifications that come in during the workday has increased. So is, is it the same thing is true there? Do you also just disable your notifications on your computer? Well, I mean, the computer is off, right? Like that's the other thing. Like well, I, talk, I joke about how airplane mode works on the ground. Computers can be turned off. It's a shocking, shocking concept, I know. Well, not but, while you work, right? I mean, well, while you're working. There's focus mode, right? You know how you have a piece of toast that pops up, surprises you. That happens with your computer, right? You're focusing, you're doing some work, and then some toast pops up and it says, hey, Mads is online. Or the worst one where someone's like, got a sec? pause for effect got a sec what do you want like what do you what do you, what do you, you 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 enable interruptions by not by allowing those notifications by not using focus mode which is built into uh built into windows you can actually right click if you go right now imagine the lower right hand corner next to your clock on windows there's a yep. little right click on that nobody right clicks on it click mm -hmm. focus to click focus assist yep. There's priority there's only or alarms only. You can turn all those chats off. Well, that's fantastic. I'm looking at that right now. Yeah. I never I never noticed that. And then here's a trick though. Teams is an Electron app, so Teams does its notifications differently. You have to decide whether or not you want Teams to run its notifications through its notification center or the Windows one. If you run it through the Windows one, it will accept that uh, that focus assist. Okay, I need to do that because I think I turned them off in Windows and then I turned them back on in Teams, and now they're only in Teams, and I, it's kind of weird. And so I can't like swipe them away like I can with the Windows Toasts. Yep. And so it's kind of annoying. Teams Toasts are different unless you choose to run them through the, the regular notification system. You know, um, not to derail, but speaking of toasters, right? You were, you were talking about a toaster popping. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I was in Hawaii. This is uh, this winter before the all the working from home happened, all that, and we were staying in this uh, house that we rented. And um, you know, they had a they had a toaster, they had a coffee machine, they had an oven, they had like all you know, it was a kitchen and all that. And all the appliances all beeped when they were done, as if you couldn't hear toast popping violently up and making a loud noise. Then it did like three beeps, and you know, with little kids sleeping and it's early in the morning, right? Or or coffee, the coffee maker is done, and it's like, why do you beep? Just don't, why do you notify me about these things? You don't have to. <laughs> but see, this is what I get into that idea of the defaults. It's very easy to accept the defaults because it's very tiring to go and assert the defaults, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. being able to say, well, hang on a second. This isn't working for me. And I reject it. 
takes a little bit of time. So I would encourage the folks that are listening to set up a half an hour on Friday afternoon here and just look at all the things that bother you, things, all the things that pop up. Can I mute that? Can I snooze that? Can I tell keep this from happening? And then just reassert, make an appointment with yourself to assert the defaults. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, I have so, a, if you don't mind, can I go to some of the questions? Because some of these are fantastic. Yeah, and I, don't I, was, I was just about to, so please go ahead. Oh, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the one I was really excited about here was a, the one where John W. says, what percentage are you using video versus audio? Staring at my coworkers for an hour is a bit weird. I've been doing a lot of both research ad hoc and otherwise in this in this space right now. And we have to accept that everyone is different and everyone works differently. So some things work for people and some things don't. I'm a big fan of the Brady Bunch view. I want to see everybody. I want all the context. If you could put 50 by 50 grid of everyone in the meeting on the screen, I need that information. But another person said, well, they were a visual artist and they couldn't stop looking at backgrounds. They were distracted. It was like squirrel and they were looking at stuff. And I reminded them that, well, you know, you can right click and pin on the individual. You can hide incoming video. So if you don't want to see your coworkers, even if they have video on or not, you can consciously cl click hide incoming video. You can pin the people that you want to see. You can see the active speaker or you can just see nobody. But the other thing, and I know that you and I have talked about this before, we're looking kind of at each other, which is kind of weird. We don't have to. We could shift our bodies and put the webcam on a different screen or a different location. And it could be more like this. Now that sounds silly, but Phil Hack and I used to work remotely and we were cubicle mates. So I would turn to my left and he would turn to his right because of the way we oriented ourselves. And we would work quietly and listen to our music. And I'd go, hey, do you have a second? And he would turn to his right. And we added that little bit of physicality. And I wasn't then staring at him. I was there. We were together in our space, but we were not visually bothering each other. And that that that, that helped as well. Um, the percentage that we're doing, uh, that we did some research and the team's team put a blog post about it. Right now in Norway, about 63 to 70%, I think if I recall, of team's calls are video. Uh, in the U.S., it's between 30 and 40 percent of the calls to have video turned on. So I think it's a largely cultural thing, and I think it's also an inclusion issue. Not everyone's camera ready. Not everyone wants to be camera ready. Not everyone wants you to invade their personal space, and that's why we have the ability to blur backgrounds and things like that. And it's important to be able to, uh, you know, be in your private space. You don't have to let your coworkers into your house if you don't want to. Yeah. That's I really think it's the Teams feature where you can blur your background is pretty phenomenal because it kind of removes that barrier. Absolutely. But I also know that like some people um, that I work with there, they just say, hey, I'm not going to turn on my camera because, you know, I didn't you know, do my hair this morning or something like that. Right. And that's it's, their right. And we shouldn't absolutely. we shouldn't just um, spring it on someone like we started a meeting. Hey, it's a camera on meeting. Right. What you do is you give them a heads up. You say, hey, we're going to be presenting to the VP and I, we'd love it if this was camera on. I think it's an, another great example, a nice parallel is remember when we used to go to meetings and people would sit there and delete email and you're like, would you close your laptop? Well, now you've sprung it on them, right? So mm -hmm. let them know ahead of time. This is a no laptops meeting. This is a camera ons meeting. Yeah. Uh, here's a related one uh, from uh, Danila, she asks, do you have some non-official meeting with colleagues during the working from home? Um, so we do on a couple of the teams I'm in. Um, mm. So every morning, uh, all of Amanda's program managers, so Amanda's our vice president, and um, we meet for 15 minutes every morning at 8 a.m. The ones who can, the ones who are, you know, want to, um, very casually just talking about like anything and everything. And so that's really nice just to kind of keep that sort of casual uh, thing going. Uh, the water cooler talk basically or, you know, around the in the morning at, at work in building 18, you know, very often we meet at the coffee machine waiting for our coffee. And so uh, that's the equivalent of that we have at 8 a.m., which is very nice. And then I got like from with two other teams, I have like a 10 a.m. And I think I have a 
11 a.m. or something like that. Again, completely optional and just a, a good way to kind of casually say hi to your team. And so I really, really appreciate that. I can highly recommend it. It's a it's a nice um, it helps keep me sane, I'd say, you know, because it's a lot of alone time and I'm used to and I really cherish to be around other people, which is kind of weird because I'm an introvert, but I really do enjoy it. And um, and this this type these type of casual meetings give me that. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that the way, in my opinion, for uh, Danila is to say that these are not required meetings, right? This is a drop in, drop out. If you're trying to simulate work, you have a kitchen space, you have a water cooler, you have a hallway, and people can be there at a certain time or not be there at a certain time. I've, I've shown up to four or five of those meetings with Amanda, and sometimes people are there, sometimes people are talking about what TV shows they watched, right? If no one wants, you're saying that you think your team doesn't want it. I would hold it anyway, every day for a week or two. And I bet you people would slowly start to come in once they realize that, that it's there, that it's an option. You know, what's really nice about the team that notifies you that someone started a meeting is that you don't have to be the first one to go on one of those casual team meetings. You'll just wait till someone signs on. And if it's someone that you're comfortable talking with, you know, one on one until someone else signs on, you just join that meeting right then and there or you decide not to. And it's totally fine. And so that I see that happening. Um, so it's just just really nice and low key. All right, so Scott, I have another problem. Yes, it's working from home that I hope you can help me with because you've said you've uh, worked from home for 13 years. Is that right? Yes, sir. OK, so. I find it kind of boring. Um, you know, it's the sit, what the sitting part. You know, I'm in my home every day and whether I'm at work or at the weekend or it, during dinner, I'm it, I'm sitting at the same table uh, in the same chair, you know, looking at the same pictures on the wall and whatnot. So it's like very it maybe it it's not as inspiring as going to work as let's say it put it that way. Uh, but it does feel like a little bit boring. Uh, so is that something you feel or have felt and dealt with? Yeah, I think that that's a fair statement. I think that again, I want to make that comment that we talked about at the very beginning that remote work and quarantine work are different things, right? We have to accept that this isn't remote work because if it was, I could go to the mall and I could sit at the mall and let the mall, you know, <laughs> the noise of the, the din of the mall uh, give me a little bit of energy, you know, that go to Starbucks. You know, if you get bored and you're working from home, you can you can leave. Uh, this is what sucks is the inability to be able to go anywhere and, and derive energy from anything that is not inside your your own house. So the only thing that I've been able to do in the time that I've been doing this is to uh, is to try to mix it up. And not everyone has that privilege, right? Not everyone has a house with multiple rooms. But do you have the space to literally change the direction that you're sitting? Opening a window, moving to a different desk, going into the kitchen, sitting on your porch. What you're looking for, in my opinion, is just some visual change, something to let you know that, let your brain know, to fool your brain that things have changed a little bit so that you can get that inspiration, that moment of something's going on, something's different. So I, I have another desktop here and I've got a, a stand and I can sit over here and I can stand and work for a little while or I can go sit in the backyard. You know, we are allowed to go out of the house in the sense that we can sit on our porch. You know what I mean? Uh, where have you worked that isn't just your kitchen? Oh man, like uh, I sit in the sunroom, I've started to sit outside when the weather, like in the last week or so, the, the weather has, has been really nice around here. Uh, if I need privacy, I go into the bedroom, which is horrible. I have like a like an arm, armchair or whatever, and it's not that comfortable, but you know, it works for shorter periods of time when I need, you know, if I'm a meeting with a with the senior leadership or something like that, and it, it needs quiet. Um, but um, yeah, no, I'm pretty much everywhere, but it's, I have one place that I prefer to be, but I'm, I kind of have to follow the flow of the family and people around this house. And so I kind of just go with the flow. Uh, oh, Scott, your voice. Oh, sorry. 
one thing that I, I found, I muted, that uh, that makes me happy is a thing called I miss the office dot EU. OK, and what this is, is a website that makes office noises. OK, listen. <laughs> Whose office is that? I wonder. It's just sound. It's people moving. It's it's white noise, but it's the specific sound of I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like phones ringing and copy machines going and the ping pong machine. You know, it's it's random sounds of the office so that you just don't go completely bonkers. And yeah. you can click on the sounds you want to hear. Coworkers, copy machines. And listen to them. That's pretty Here's awesome. Them. Try that. Let me see if you can. Uh, they won't let me include system audio, but you get the idea. <laughs> it's a fun project. Yeah, so just any trick you can do. You've got white noise. There's also a thing called pink noise. You, there are introverts, there are extroverts, there are ambiverts uh, that go multiple ways. But knowing these things all comes back to that original statement that I made about asserting the defaults. Yes, it is absolutely boring and it sucks, Mads. And um, if you don't try something else, then yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna suck. All right. Yeah. Um, we got a, a question here for, uh, from uh, Jerome. How do you deal with the with mentally starting and ending a work day? Like being inside all day. Ooh, that's a good one. So mm -hmm. I commute to my house. I go out of the house to the mailbox, do a do a loop around the neighborhood. I mean, I get to live in rural area. Not everyone can do this, but you are allowed to go outside for, you know, essential things. So do something, some something that makes it different. And the other thing that I've done is I've tried to make my office look as different from the rest of my house as possible. It's a it's a it's a visual trick. I'm just nesting. Now, some people look at my office and they're like, "Oh my god, I don't, it's all blinged down. I don't have the money." Or da, da da da. This is a really cheap office. It's just full of a lot of crap. I don't want you to think this is a money thing. Those are IKEA Billy shelves. Those are LED lights. This couch. This is actually a slip cover. You know what I'm saying? This is not. This is a this is a twenty dollar slip cover change the color of the couch. Why is that important? Because it doesn't look like any other part of my house. I've, I've fooled myself into thinking this is an office. And then when I'm done with the day, I shut everything down. I leave the office, the spare bedroom, and I close the door and I go to another part of the house that's totally visually different. Nothing in the house is painted this way. None of the furniture looks this way. None of the lighting is this way. So try to and then go outside and sit on your porch like you need that light to like simulate a commute if that makes sense. What about uh, lunch? Do you go out or do you stay home? Well, I mean, we can't go out. So oh, right yeah. now it's been right. well, like tonight we're going to have movie night and we're going to rent a movie. Uh, one of the expensive ones, they have a whole thing where the movies that were in the theater are available now. We've got candy. We're going to make a little um, pretend you know, welcome to the movie theater thing for the kids and they'll come in and give us their tickets and, you know, you try to simulate uh, reality as best you can. But so for the lunch hour, you, yeah, of course you stay home. I know you used to go out for tacos. I assume you still ate tacos, but at home, but do yeah, you I like- make, Yeah, I just make them here. And you don't eat them in the office. You, you do like a separate thing. Do you set a timer? Like I have to so do a with, with full the hour? Thing, the lunch thing is an interesting one. Two things that, excuse me, two things there that I think are interesting. First, when you are doing lunch, do you want to eat by yourself? Is that what you need? Is that what you what makes you happy? Or do you um, want to have lunch with someone else? So if you want to have some lunch with somebody else, invite them to lunch, then do that thing I was talking about, the positioning, because it's weird to eat close like this. But if we decide to sit next to each other and we can eat together, there's kind of a peacefulness in that. You know what I'm saying? So do you have a lunch buddy? Do you have multiple lunch buddies? Um, can you 
eat somewhere else. Take your laptop to a, a different place like the cafeteria and eat there and then come back. It's about those ways you can fool yourself that something has changed or something is different. All right. Um, that's a good one. So we got another question here from uh, Tomas who asks Scott you. Um, so now with the uh, whole quarantine and everything, has that changed your um, you know, daily schedule and how so? Has it changed my daily schedule? It's changed everyone. I, I said that at the very beginning that working from working from home is not quarantine work. Yes, uh, I miss going to Starbucks. I miss going to the I like to sit in the food court at the mall and I need like the electricity of other humans in the room, like the energy. Um, I find that I'm not moving enough. Like you really have to stand up. It is not normal for a human to sit in one place. You gotta be moving yourself around. You gotta be changing your posture. You gotta change your situation. So all of those have uh, have have been a challenge. Yeah. All right. So you touched a little bit on uh, on sort of you got some hardware there. You got some some lights that change green or red, whether or not the kids are allowed to come into your room or not your your mm -hmm. office room. What other type of uh, tech or hardware do you have that kind of helps out with with uh, working from home? Well, I do like I do like my. Um, my cameras and such. I enjoy those, um, but I don't think that you need to have a fancy camera or spend money to do these things. So right here, I've got a nice camera. I can turn the light off. It's quite dramatic, I would say, the difference. Um, I can change to a different camera, which is a more regular, just a regular webcam. So let me bring that up. Here's just a regular webcam, okay? But I can open the window, you know, and change the light. So we can we can decide how we want things to look based on how we position ourselves in our space. A laptop webcam can look like a million bucks if it's got enough light. That's the trick. Light, light, light. If you have a natural sunlight place or anywhere you can sit in front of a window with the camera in front of you, you don't need to go and buy a fancy setup with a bunch of lighting. You really can just find natural light and webcam just suck up the light. I was talking with Damien Edwards on the team and he was reminding me that the one of the reasons that webcams uh, look the way that they do is that if they don't have enough light, what happens is they stay open longer and the frame rate goes down. So the less light, the lower the frame rate. The more light, the more natural and the clearer the frame rate. And I think that if you are a person who wants your camera on, your audience, your team members will appreciate that natural light. Mm -hmm. You don't need to buy anything for that. I mean, you can buy cameras and crap, but I mean, th th I'm doing this because it's fun and it's and I and I and I do video training, but I don't think it's necessary. And I don't want anyone to feel like they have to rush out and buy a bunch of camera crap. Um, and again, this is all cheap. This is a thirty dollar. This is a thirty dollar. Um, uh, what do you call this microphone thing? I paid fifteen bucks for the light on on Amazon. Um, you don't need to go and invest if you don't want to. You can if it makes you happy, but I don't think that you do. So that light you got there, I assume it's LED, so it's not hot on your face. But is it? Uh, it's not blinding either. I haven't found it to be because you can also change the color temperature. Mm -hmm. Basing on how you want to look and how you want to feel. So there's like a daylight version and I've got another little cheapo. I've actually got a piece of tape on it right now because it's broken. Um, light that, you know, so you can set like sunlight color and stuff like that. And this was, I think, 20 bucks on Amazon and it's just a a big LED light. And I try to do that in the in the um, in the winter time so I don't go insane from uh, not enough sun. Yeah, that makes sense. My my wife got one of those too. Like she needs her daylight, and the uh, the winters here <laughs> oh, yeah, are pretty absolutely. dark. So absolutely, yeah. one hundred percent. Let's see. There were a couple of other questions that I wanted to make sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Alan had a very nice thing that they were saying that uh, they've been working remotely for the majority of the last thirty years and had some suggestions for us. Uh, they set up a recess for the kids, so having planned fun things. This is a nice one for you, Mads. Uh, a planned session, which is something fun as a reward for giving mom or dad their privacy. 
So this idea that the two year old or who, however old your kids are is bothering you. You say, hey, if you can give me an hour of privacy, then we'll do something fun afterwards. So a little bit of a structured uh, trade there, which I think is a really good idea. That is a fantastic idea. So I basically I'll schedule like half an hour somewhere an hour in my calendar for playing with my kids, let's say. Mm -hmm. And so that is a really good idea. I never thought of that. Here's another interesting one from an anonymous person saying, uh, now that everyone's working remotely, the people are working, they have their own private time. What do you do about team members that just stop delivering? It is a challenge to figure out what the right number of work hours is. If you're teaching your kids from home, if you are the the single parent and you or you have two parents that work and you're struggling, schools are closed and the kids are there, you are going to have more of a challenge than than other folks. And I think it's important to note that it's unreasonable to expect someone to be available nine to five to do video calls if they're in the middle of teaching their kids. I'm dropping out to go and work with the kids and having them uh, Skype and teams into their 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 schools on the regular. Um, but we also have to recognize that our team members are adults. Like it's not my job, to, it's really not in this time to be bothering them, checking on them too much. The fact is you've been given a task, you time box the task and you say, try to accomplish this in this time and here's your clear deliverable. Uh, setting people up for success by saying, here's a clear deliverable, get it done however you you work, right? How are you partitioning your deliverables, Mads? Because you don't certainly need me or anyone else micromanaging you. You gotta, you have stuff that you have to deal with. Yeah, it's uh, like in the beginning when my productivity was way down, like when I first started working from home, uh, I was very upfront about it. I told my entire team and my manager saying, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be very in unproductive and uh, things are gonna be late. and uh, no one said anything. No one. There was no, you know, hard feelings or anything at all. And some of my team members came and said the same thing uh, as well afterwards. So it seems like if if you realize that you are the one that might be on reduced productivity and might delay your deliverables, uh, just be upfront about it. Share it. Make sure they all know and they have, you know, a clear understanding and, and that that's going to happen and. These are these are unprecedented times, right? So um, no one said a thing. It 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 worked out great. Uh, it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good to be the one that um, didn't deliver. Um, that the feeling of being unproductive for the maybe for the first time in my career, um, it was not a good feeling. But you know, when you then get the support from your uh, team and your and your managers, then it's all good again. All right, so uh, speaking of hardware, so there's been a several questions about, you know, the setup. So Scott, you asked me, you said, hey, when you're doing this video thing, you need, uh, you know, make sure you have your external monitors and then you, you need to be hardwired into your docking station uh, with wired uh, ethernet and power and all this sort of stuff. And uh, use a, your secondary workstation to host the video stream because that requires a lot of uh, processing power. So you don't want to do that from your, let's say, your demo laptop. Uh, and then I told you, but Scott, uh, all I have is a laptop. I don't have monitors. I don't have a docking station. I don't have a secondary okay. thing. I don't remote into a workstation somewhere else or a VM hosted on Azure. So or you're limited like right now with one laptop at home and that's it. You don't have a space and that's a very common thing. It's unusual to have a home office and multiple computers. Right, but yeah, probably, but I don't at work have multiple. I just have a laptop. That's all I have. And it's all I've had for like around 10 years. Such a minimalist. <laughs> you know, it works great. It works great. And uh, you know, there was a period of two years um, when I worked on the web team, um, on the Visual Studio ASP.NET web team, that I didn't even have a desk. I had a comfy, chair and a footstool instead of a desk and that was where i camped up for two years just with a laptop in my lap it was horrible for my back and neck and all this sort of stuff but it was very comfortable did you decide it though was it an intentional decision it was but we were like cramped for space and i kind of said you know i'd rather do this than feel a little bit cramped and besides i'm kind of a person that walks around all the time i don't do meetings I just mm -hmm. go straight to 
the person I need to talk to and talk to them if they're there. And if they're not, I'm coming back in an hour and see if, they, if they've showed up. And um, that works very well for me. And that's maybe also why it's a little bit hard for me to be home now because I'm, I'm, I'm used to really use the uh, having other people around mm -hmm. in an active way. Uh, but it's just to the questions about like the hardware, like I've had no complaints about like just using my laptop camera and you know, here's just, these are some old iPhone headphones. Um, no one's complained about it. Um, so I don't know if you actually need anything really just to kind of follow up on what you were saying, Scott. Uh, you bought a lot of things. I did. I have my Surface Laptop 2, and um, before that, I had a Lenovo Yoga, and, and mm -hmm. that was the same story. No one ever complained about, you know, the quality of the camera or anything like that. So, um, yeah, you know, I, we, as I said before, we don't need to buy a bunch of stuff. This isn't about the acquisition of things. You said I bought a bunch of stuff, and I acquired stuff. A lot of this stuff came from Goodwill, uh, which is a local thrift shop. I've got a TV right here. I got it for twenty bucks. So. The minimum that you can do on on the cheap. I do think, though, as a remote worker, and I've, I'm also a kind of tech support for the family. I'm sure that you are as well. Um, I have, you know, multiple laptops that I'm managing of of family members and cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff. Uh, I do think that as a remote worker of some amount of essentialness, it's good to have a backup laptop, even if it's a crappy one. So if your laptop died, the hard drive died today, what's your backup pl plan? Oh, or that a new could be one. an iPad or a phone, but you know, how productive could you be? I no, I'm not productive. I'll have to. I'll drive down to Best Buy or order on Amazon. That would be or yeah, like you have to order on Amazon because their Best Buy is yeah. closed. So in like over my 20 year car uh, career, or whatever, I've never had a laptop uh, breakdown. You realize by saying that now you've set yourself up. For <laughs> yeah, I maybe hate to have that happen right now and have your computer lab, but I don't. With all due respect, that's not a. Hope is not a strategy. I'm not hoping. I'm just oh, well, using this is just statistical observation, right? This is not happened. It is on. There's a difference between uh, being something that's possible and something that's probable. And I'm not. And I'm not optimizing a hard drive is six years. Right, but I'm not optimizing for uh, you know possible. I'm optimizing for probable with a plan for what's possible. And my plan is that I don't have anything local on my hard drive that I need. So I have everything is in the cloud. I can literally throw this out and I can get a new laptop and within like an hour or two, I'm completely back and up and running and have everything I need. Mm -hmm. yep. That's cool. what I do. Well, why don't we start wrapping up as we get towards lunchtime here? Um, if you have found this to be a useful thing, let us know. We will try it in the future to have a split screen. We did try that at the beginning. Uh, it didn't work 100%, but we are kind of trying to update our production value. And Mads, you had talked about figuring out how to do this and having guests come, come on. Um, and whether or not we do it as a live event, this is a Teams live event, or whether we do it as an actual Teams meeting might be another option to have folks come on. Yeah, that's right. So we're planning on shipping this um, or publishing this to Channel Line or YouTube or something like that so people can watch after the fact. And um, uh, yeah, the hope is that we can do this on a weekly basis and exactly how we're going to do it, we don't know yet. We're just kind of experimenting at the moment. And so if you have any feedback, anything like, uh, I think everyone on the call right now are uh, got the link from Twitter. So please just uh, tweet us. Um, and a tweet to uh, the uh, Visual Studio uh, Twitter account. So it's literally just called Visual Studio. So, um, and that's also where we will publish uh, the new uh, dates and times for when the future shows will be with links and all that. So if you don't already follow that uh, Twitter account, make sure you do. Uh, that is the official team Twitter account. And the idea is that we're gonna talk about working from home and different aspects of that. But this is also Visual Studio, so we will get more Visual Studio uh, stuff in as well. And who knows, maybe we are going to talk about like uh, some really interesting, never talked about before uh, Visual Studio deep dive features or whatnot. And uh, or maybe even get some some early previews of, of some stuff in the future. Who knows? Uh, as I said, this is an experiment. We're trying to get it off uh, off the ground here. So uh, yeah, your feedback is much appreciated. And I think we went through all the questions too, Scott. 
I think so. And we'll all we'll try to come here on the regular and answer more. I think next time we should try it as a um, as a regular teams event. We can try different things. It doesn't always have to be this way. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and until next time, stay safe.